question that was kind of eating away at me. If you were, uh, you tried to commit suicide several times, if you were not afraid of death at your own hands, then how were you afraid of death when you were admitted to King's Park? That's a really good question. You're not the first person to ask it, though I was surprised the first time I heard it. I hadn't thought about that before. Um, first of all, I was afraid to die at my own hands. And you know, I, I would see my suicide attempts more as cries for help than, you know, I'm gonna die today no matter what. Uh, but I was willing to die. However, that was on my own terms, in my own schedule, at my own time. To die at someone else's hands is a very different turn of events. The why of that is very interesting. Maybe somebody in the audience knows. I would, the first thing that comes to my mind is lack of control. At first, uh, I think we might have all thought this was just going to be your own personal story. But then, did it evolve as you were making the film? Did you decide as you were making it, you would begin there and then, wow, it just, it just expanded. You wanted to almost do a, a film on the whole you know, mental health issue. That, did, it, did it happen like that? It happened exactly like that. Um, I started out, and you know, I, one of the things that I've been doing is showing scenes from the film at Grand Rounds. Um, to doctors and nurses in hospitals around the country. And I say to them, it started out as a film just about myself and my own journey, but quickly uh, my interest became much more the story of the hospital. And not just the story of the hospital, I think one thing I learned and that Jan and I talked about a lot is that the story of the hospital the story of one state hospital can really be the story of any state hospital in this country, and in that sense, is really the story of public mental health care. First of all, describe your partnership here. Okay. Um, you know, I travel a lot with the film, which has been a great privilege and a joy, and the extraordinary group of people with whom I made this movie are never there. and. Jan, um, we had many advisors who helped us. Jan is, aside from being one of the wisest people I've ever met, um, I like mortifying her in this way. Um, what she means is old. <laughs> um, is, uh, I knew nothing about mental health care when I started the film except my own experience. And Jan um, has experienced uh, the, the other side of mental health care the caregiving side from so many different perspectives, psychiatric nurse, psychiatric hospital CEO, community mental health care, McLean's Hospital, St. Elizabeth's. And so we really journeyed together on many of the shoots and much of the research, and it was just so wonderfully helpful. Jan, did you work at Kings Park? No, I never worked at Kings Park but so many other places similar to it. Mm. So I was struggling on the way out with how to grasp my relationship with Lucy. I guess it's two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. She, from the standpoint of having lived through it, relying and hoping to get care, and myself from the other side, trying to provide care, and what I heard her giving voice to were the same obstacles I had been fighting with all of my career. This film is critical of the hospital very, but at the same time, it honors the perspective and experience of many different people. And for me, that was kind of central to the healing process because um, it wasn't serving me to be a victim. And that's the perspective from which I started. I thought it was fascinating when you went back to the original woman who admitted you and that she agreed to see you and that she was so forthcoming. Did that surprise you? That really, really surprised me. I mean, the first thing that surprised me was that she remembered me. I mean, because it had been over 30 years. I don't remember anybody from 30 years ago. Uh, and we didn't know each other for that long a time. And 
What especially surprised me was that she was willing to let me come to her house for the very first time in over 30 years with a camera crew. I mean, that was amazing. And um, I have very complicated feelings about those experiences, but I can only respect and be in awe of her generosity. The, uh, the hope I see is all of the work that's being done neurologically these days. As we begin, and it is only a beginning, to understand the functioning of the brain and uh, understand what affects feelings. What Lucy had and what all of us are familiar with to one degree or another is depression. She had a serious depression as a young adolescent. I've struggled with depression, but so what? You know, it's the most treatable illness we have. If you're going to have something, have a depression. <laughs> but, but, Here, have a depression. It's on me. <laughs> but we stigmatize it, and we have got to stop that. I think part of you hit a, a core here, though, because it's the very beginning mm -hmm. of our knowledge about this. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why we, it, there's such a stigma and there's such a sense of horror about, you say the words, King's Park. <gasps> but my big dream for this film is that it affect change. Mm. And it's been shown at every significant mental health conference in the country, the annual conferences, from the American Psychiatric Association, the National Association of Social Workers, etc. And I think that it is making a difference. I really do. And then, of course, it needs to be shared with a general audience. And uh, that is, I think, the final phase. Yeah. Lucy Weiner, thank you so much, and Jen as well. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you all. And thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Take two film festival, right?